We start with our Newsmakers segment and talk about school finance and other issues that confront the Kansas legislature. Joining me is State Representative Stephanie Clayton, a Johnson County Republican who was first elected in 2012. She represents the 19th District, which is in Overland Park. Representative Clayton, thank you for coming in and welcome to Ruckus. Thank you for having me. So the $80 million mistake notwithstanding, uh, which we'll talk about in a moment, are you happy overall with the way the state finance legislation turned out? Not entirely. I think that we could have done better. There are some amendments that uh, were proposed on the House floor that I supported that ultimately did not make it onto the bill, which is a bit of a shame because oftentimes uh, when I look at a bill that comes out of committee, I think just like any other legislator, ooh, how can we make this better? So. Uh, I am overall happier with the plan that emerged from the House as opposed to the one that emerged from the Senate. So I was pleased to see the House plan pass, but I still think that in uh, some ways it falls short. So I'm sort of waiting with bated breath to see how it's reviewed. All right, the amount was something like $534 million, I believe. Yes. Uh, and after the passage of the bill, it was revealed that there was an $80 million error and uh, that would be involving funds distributed the first year of the five-year plan. So I gather you're going back to vote again on this same legislation. Uh, yes, we are. So we're voting to correct that error. Uh, there, it's fairly significant, and it does affect some local Johnson County school districts, so it was uh, fairly concerning to a lot of us. There, there's some speculation that there are members of the state Senate, Republicans, who weren't happy with this in the first place, and finally gave up and voted for it at the last minute who might reconsider their votes. Have you heard any talk about that? Given the behavior of the Senate last Saturday <laughs> night, such a move would not surprise me. It would be disappointing, though. One of the biggest problems with this is that this is work that we should have had done per the AG's request on March 1st. It is, what day is it, April 12th? And our deadline is April 30th. We do not reconvene for our uh, wrap-up session until April 26th. So you can see that time is of the essence. And so at this point, I hope that we just pass something quickly and get something onto the courts for their review. Well, uh, regardless of what happens in the legislature, if that measure is passed, it goes to the state Supreme Court. Are you optimistic the court will say this time the funding is sufficient? I can say that I have a cautious degree of optimism and that that optimism is fairly low, but it's not completely absent. How, how about the school districts that are involved in the litigation, including the one in Kansas City, Kansas? Do you think they'll be satisfied? That remains to be seen, and so that is for them to determine. That's not for me to determine. Uh, the new governor of Kansas, uh, Jeff Collier, says the state will have enough money to finance this additional financing for the school districts without a tax increase. Do you think that's right? Yes, I've, I've reviewed the numbers and looked at the plan, and yes, if we do the five-year phase in, as the plan indicates, then we should be fine. How do you think Collier is doing? He's been the governor since uh, Governor Brownback uh, retired, resigned to take a job with the federal government. Uh, how do you think Governor Collier is doing? I think that his manner of governing is calm and ha, from a state legislative standpoint, it's kind of nice to just uh, forget that the governor is there. And so uh, Governor Brownback never really let us forget that he was on the second floor as he was always uh, tended to clash against the legislature in particular in the past two years. And so oftentimes I forget that Governor Collier is there. And so that uh, from a legislative standpoint, that pleases me. You're a Republican. Have you given any thought at this point to which Republican gubernatorial candidates you'll support? No, I have not. All right. Uh, let me ask you a couple other questions. Uh, you are known, I think, as a moderate Republican. Is that fair to say? Yes, it is. How would you distinguish uh, principally the difference between a moderate Republican in the Kansas House and a conservative Republican in the House? Well, I think one of the main differences between a moderate Republican and a conservative Republican is that a moderate Republican tends to run on a very, very education-focused basis, where we are looking at sustaining and possibly 
possibly even growing public education because we recognize it as the number one, uh, you know, sort of economic development tool that Kansas has to offer. Whereas conservatives tend to look at the opportunity of shrinking government and they see public education as government schools. And so they look to shrink that. And education is the biggest item in the uh, state's budget. Yes, it is for a good reason because it's <laughs> worth spending the money on. Indeed. Uh, you're running for re-election? Yes, I am. All right. Good luck in the campaign. Thank you very much for coming in. A pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much. That is Kansas State Representative Stephanie Clayton from Johnson County. Now let's meet the panel and start a ruckus. <laughs>